So April Wenzel um, is somebody who I saw speak at NG uh, Atlanta. Actually, I think it was this. I was in the audience. My head might be there somewhere. Um, she founded a company called Compassionate Coding. Uh, so it's actually a trademark, so we're not allowed to use that in um, any of my, my talks. Uh, so that's why it's titled Compassionate Code. Um, but the, uh, the idea is, you know, from the, right from their website, it says, it's a new approach to software development that emphasizes emotional intelligence and um, and when I first heard that she was going to be speaking at this conference, I was, I was like, what is she talking about? What, what is this topic? I don't understand it. Uh, and after listening to her and seeing how uh, uh, excited and seeing some of the examples that she showed, I was like, wow, this is, this is how we should be doing things. This is uh, revolutionary, uh, or evolutionary, I suppose. And sorry, I just need to fix this because this is not what we're supposed to be watching right now. Um, although I highly recommend all of her videos. Um, You're not going to watch her videos on my time. There. Okay. So follow her on Twitter. Uh, she's 
you know, basically the catalyst for me coming to talk about this. Uh, I'm really excited about it, and she provides uh, some really great inspiration. Go check out her uh, her website. She did a talk about um, uh, compassionate code reviews, which sounds a lot like compassionate pull requests, which is uh, something that we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, I promise I didn't steal it, but she could probably talk about it way better than I could. So, you know, please go and check that out. So, uh, before we get rolling, um, let me show this works before I claim victory here. Hey, all right, compassionate. What's compassionate mean? Anybody? Anybody know? Anybody have have an idea? That's like showing uh, concern, sympathy for other people. Uh, then where'd you get that from? No, <laughs> no that, that is that's not it at all. Why? You know, why? Why would you say this? Okay. That's just what I thought. If you could just not raise your hand again. I, I <laughs> um, anybody else want to give it a shot? Yeah, no, nobody wants to give it a shot after someone, you hear somebody treated like that, right? That's me not showing compassion. So uh, literally, that's you know what we do to ourselves in when we're doing code reviews, right? We tend to slam the person, maybe not the person, but we slam the code, their responses, right? Um, he's given me some uh, some information, and I was like, no, that's wrong. You're doing it wrong, right? You're holding it wrong. All you know, all those things. So that's uh, something that we need to fix uh, in in our industry and in uh, our day to day uh, life. We have to remember that there's humans behind all of these uh, all this code and all these pull requests. So um, you know, after you make a pull request or make a comment or see somebody else doing that. You're more apprehensive about doing it or volunteering or, or any of those things, right? You you realize like, oh wait, I need to be careful. I need to tread lightly. I need to do. We need to stop that. We need, we need to make it more uh, more welcoming and more uh, accepting. So compassionate. Um, my friend Nick here, who I may volunteer, actually read the definition uh, that is on the screen there, and um, so that that is it. it. It's really giving consideration to another person. Uh, one of the interesting, th interesting things to me about the definition, uh, as shown by Google here, uh, is the antonyms. So the antonyms of indifferent and uh, heartless. Ooh, I would never want to be called either of those things, right? If you put in some time and effort and you're lacking uh, in those, you know, people think that about you. That's really one of those things that, wow, that I, don't, I would never want somebody to, to think that about me. I would prefer someone be against my opinion than think that, I really don't care, um, and so uh, this comes into play. Uh, one of the uh, things that you also hear along the lines with compassion is empathy. Uh, a lot of people confuse empathy and sympathy. Uh, sympathy is, I'm just gonna read it, pity and sorrow for somebody else's misfortune. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that we're in this together and we're trying to achieve the same, same goals. So think about um, your day-to-day uh, your -day interactions, um, specifically, we're gonna get into some uh, pull request uh, scenarios. Uh, and think about the humans on the other end of uh, the feedback or the comments that you're leaving. Uh, relatedly, bless you. Uh, relatedly, um, you, may have, you may have heard of this guy. <laughs> uh, he's kind of known. So uh, Linus is the uh, creator of many, many things, including uh, the Linux kernel, as well as um, Android, Chrome OS, uh, and, and Git. So uh, the fact that Google lists him as a software engineer, hey, he's just a software engineer, I'm a software engineer, like we're, we're, on, the same, we're on the same page. Uh, you know, he's a smart dude, uh, probably brilliant, right? Um, maybe possi you know, possibly genius, I would consider him that in, in terms of his contributions to the software industry. Um, but part of his image though, is that he's super hardcore in reviewing uh, uh, change requests into the Linux kernel and probably into the other things. Um, and so, so much so that he has a, uh, his own uh, Reddit, subreddit, called uh, Linus Rants, which is uh, a joy to read if you're bored uh, one evening. Um, but let me give you a, uh, a little sampling of him going off on somebody. So what's interesting to me about this and sort of this relationship that he has with other software developers is that he's like at the pinnacle of many people's aspirations of what they want to do, right? People want to write code and change the world. 
Um, and he's, he's literally done that. Um, but he's kind of a jerk, right? So how do, how do we, uh, as people that are in the industry, how do we deal with that, right? So the person that we look up to that created all these great things is also a jerk. But guess what? We model that behavior. Um, and, and that's something that we need to uh, do better about. So uh, <laughs> the, um, the Linux kernel, uh, they do a lot of their uh, work in the mailing list, and it's all done in public, so all of his uh, little rants are out there. So uh, they, their um, the code repository has something called Code of Conflict, which isn't that surprising given who, given who the leader of this thing is, right? We're used to seeing uh, Code of Conduct. This is a Code of Conflict. Immediately, you get the, the thinking of people being against each other. Um, so uh, the, the the text that's in here, this is just a screen cap, is it's not horrible. Um, it, you know, I've, I've seen better, and we could probably do better. One of the things you notice is like if you have a problem with any of this, then you know contact the uh, contact the creator, contact this nameless uh, mailing address, and we'll you know we'll sort of get back to you. Right? It, it makes it feel really uh, in, sort of inhumane. Um, it's not personable. You can't really uh, attach yourself to it. So what's interesting is that uh, they recently made a change. So the change was done in, I think, September, yep, 9th of September uh, of last year, where they changed code of conduct, code of conflict to code of conduct. Um, and they put a, a lot more welcoming text into it. Um, and this is more akin to what we're used to seeing in terms of uh, code of conduct in other repositories. You'll see things in there like uh, empathy and constructive and uh, really giving you a better sense of community, a better sense of, uh, you know, people are willing to help as opposed to willing, people are wanting to come in and beat you down uh, based on the work that you've done. What's interesting is uh, the, uh, I didn't mention it from the previous slide, but uh, Bill and Ted, anybody recognize Bill and Ted from Bill and Ted's African Adventure? So the, the code of conflict literally said, uh, be excellent to each other, as if that was, you know, that's okay, that's just our model, we're gonna go with it. The, the code of conduct gives you a lot more, uh, a lot more details um, and doesn't sort of play it off as a funny quote from a movie, uh, which I think is a, a, a great step in the, in the right direction. So literally the same day uh, that this was merged in, on uh, September 16th, uh, Linus wrote a, uh, a message to the Linux kernel mailing list. And this is, uh, th I just, I got a little bit of goosebumps, I know, sorry, I'm, I'm a geek. But, this is, line is basically apologizing and saying, hey, I need to go take some time to myself and, and evaluate the way that I've been treating people. Uh, again, this is, this is public. There's a, a link down there to the kernel mailing list that you can go look at. But for the, the, for the um, sort of the world's biggest jerk in terms of software to admit this publicly, excuse me, publicly and go and say, I'm going to take some time for myself, reevaluate things, um, uh, you know, really to me emphasizes the, the fact of how software creation has changed over the years um, and really shines a light on you know, how we really should be treating each other in our uh, daily interactions um, and more importantly for us in the engineering world um, within uh, software. So one of, the, uh, one of the reasons why I got into the software industry um, was because stuff either worked or didn't. Right, um, 30 <laughs> many years ago, uh, when I wrote my first bit of code, uh, it didn't work. But then I tweaked it, tweaked it, and oh my god, it worked. And that feeling of like, this is awesome, I can create something, I'm telling the machine what to do. Um, that's what really got me into it. What I really liked um, was the, the fact that it was binary. Either it worked or it didn't. Um, and so that gave me you know, a great satisfaction. I've never been one to uh, be creative. Uh, and draw pictures or, or color. I was always the, the kid that was coloring in the lines and um, really just, I, to this day, I say I don't have a creative bone in my body, uh, but the, uh, the fact that I can look at everything through a lens of it's either right or wrong, it's zero or one, it's binary, you know, really got me, uh, got me going, got, got me pretty far in life. But over the years, I realized it's not true, right? There's, um, there's many ways to solve a problem. You know, I was uh, uh, 
Uh, I'm always amazed when, you know, I shouldn't say amazed, but I'm always uh, excited when somebody comes up with a different kind of solution to a problem that I kind of, in my head, had a solution for. There's a slightly different and attacked from a different way. And I think some of that is because we've got different backgrounds. We've got different uh, uh, ways that we've learned um, learn to code and learn how to solve problems. Um, and that, that really gets us to a point where we can you know, combine forces, we can uh, learn from each other and really get to the best solution um, or you know, more ideal solution by working together um, with people from various backgrounds, right? We're, we don't live in a world anymore where computer engineering, software engineering, software development is only for those people that went to a computer science degree um, and they grew up with a, 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 you know, a, a laptop in their, in their baby carriage, right? It's everybody can do it. We need to be more inclusive, and that's how we end up uh, solving more problems. Um, and right about now is a time where uh, my face turns red because I'm a little bit nervous, so just bear with me here. Um, so let's talk about pull requests. So when you are uh, doing making a pull request or reviewing a pull request, that's the point at which the requester is uh, most vulnerable, right? They're saying, hey, here's my work, what do you think of it? And a lot of people take that as like, oh, I, I'm gonna show you what I think of it. I'm gonna show you that I'm smarter. I'm gonna show you that uh, I know more than you do, and I'm gonna attack it. Uh, you know, so you have the option. Can you, can you, be, you can be ruthless. You can be vengeful. Hey, last week when I made a PR, he attacked me on my use of spacing and semicolons. I'm gonna do the same thing to him. Or I'm gonna find something else to, to bug her about because she destroyed me last time on my pull request, right? And you get into this like battle of people trying to one up each other and you know prove that they're the smartest one on the team or the one in the group or whatever. Um, uh, I mentioned some homes and, and spacing, right? So we can nitpick each other uh, to death. Um, I've seen that happen, uh, and it, it's really uh, it's really difficult to recover from when you have people with attitudes of trying to best one another. Um, in terms of showing their, their technical uh, abilities. So don't nitpick, suggest we get a winter going. You know, suggest that we find a process to automate some of the stuff. Um, you know, the, the alternative, you know, with the heart there, is you can be helpful, you can be kind. What does that mean? So you wanna be helpful if you don't understand something or you think maybe the person has done something uh, that it's against your, you know, the standards of the team or the, the company or whatever it might be. Sure, you can let them know through a comment. But use the personal side. Call them on the phone. Slap them. Do something sort of offline that's less public. Go sit next to them. God forbid we sat next to each other. Uh, and work work through it with them. Be um, be a guide and show them that you know maybe the the details of the coupling of the two modules that they created is too tightly wound together. And they and you know maybe they're um, you know more on the junior side. They don't understand how in six months it's really going to be a pain to undo that. You know, use that opportunity to, to guide the person. Um, so let's, let's take a look at some uh, comments that I made to myself on my own repository, because why would, who doesn't do that? Uh, you know, a pull request comment that says, what about zero? Mm, to me, if I saw that, I'd say, all right, what about it, let's go, you know? It's, it's like an invitation to a fight. Um, and that's, that's not a great way to start a conversation, right? Pull request comments should be, uh, pull requests in general, are about a conversation about how to make changes. Um, and yeah, well, what about it? Am I supposed to guess what, what you're talking about with that? Um, the uh, a better version might be, this won't work when it's zero. Slightly better, but what won't work? When what's zero? Like, give me some details. You know, spend some time. The, the person spent a lot of time putting together their their code and their, their pull request, and probably 95% of it is 95% of it is right, and, and you like it, but you found this one little thing and you're just digging in and attacking. So instead of uh, you know saying what you know what's wrong, be more specific. So be specific and say, hey, what do I what do I really want out of this? What I really want is this person to write a test. So all the way back to what about zero? In my head, as I write that, I'm thinking he, he should just wrote a test for zero, and then everything would be fine. Well, say that. Right? Be clear, be, um, give them, give feedback so that it can, it, it's actionable and doesn't lead to more questions. Uh, I think it, it's, a, it's a really important way to um, show that 
you've done a thorough job and you've put some thought into it and you've spent some time and, and it, at the end of the day, you do care, right? Imagine being on the other side of the what about zero. Not, not a great feeling. Um, so, you know, be specific. Uh, yeah, and this is something that almost nobody does, right? So I mentioned that 90, 95% of the PR might be exactly what has to happen, but then you find that one little thing, like we're, we're engineers, that's what we do, like we look for problems. Uh, we try to solve problems. Uh, it's very rare that someone says, hey, I really like what you did there. But the feeling that you get on the other side of that is far away is all of the, you could have five negative ones or you put a positive one in there, and that's the one that they're gonna remember, and that's gonna make them, encourage them to keep going to, to make things better. Um, so, uh, you know, when you find something good, let the person know, right? As I was saying before, we're in this together, we're a team, and we're trying to, we're all trying to accomplish the same goal. Um, for your homework, uh, this is a, an alternation of the, the golden rule, which is, you know, treat others the way you like to be treated. Um, sort of an alternation on that is thinking about the person on the other end, right? Some people uh, like to be treated like a robot and, you know, saying, what about zero? They're like, oh, yep, I know that, right? Maybe you have a relationship with them because you've worked with them for five years and it's no big deal. But think about the person on the other end who uh, maybe is a junior or maybe, you know, just joined a team. Uh, think about what kind of uh, response they're going to get or they're going to feel based on your responses. So consider crafting your messages based on the person that's going to be receiving them. Um, okay. Um, any questions, comments before we continue? Yeah. I have a comment. <clears throat> One of the things that I found actually is that when you're reviewing <coughs> other people's code or other people are reviewing your code, you have to remember that like one of the hardest things in life is that other people aren't like you. Um, and you like you, like clearly you like you because you've organized your life to be you. Um, the clothes you wear, the things you think, everything. And when you write code, you are writing an abstraction of the way that you think. So other people will write abstractions about how they think. And you will read this and you will go, this is not how I think, therefore it must be wrong. And you really need to be able to see if you can put your head in where they're thinking and if it tells a solution. Because if you just see an abstraction that's just like not the way that you think and you say it's wrong, that's not good. Mm -hmm. It's not how you work with other people. But it's an easy trap. It's just something yeah. I noticed. That, thank you. That, that, I, I really like that. Cause there's a lot of uh, you know thinking about how the other person thinks, right? And being considerate about that. That's good. Matt, good one. Uh, also, a great opportunity to mentor and truly help junior developers. More senior. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, and I've seen um, a lot of pull requests where, you know, there's a link out to like a, a gang of four pattern or something like that and that the, the person might not be aware of. Um, those can be good as long as you're not shoveling, shoveling them all on top of them, right? You might need to take the time to sit with them and walk through it, um, but making them aware of some of these things uh, certainly will help. Cool. I think this is good too because um, it kind of transcends code reviews. You can, you can apply this to a lot of things, but you want to approach it the same way because people, you know, equally get frustrated or hurt by you know the way you come off and tell them how they, they did something or designed something. So yeah, absolutely. Yes. One of the, one of the things that uh, I think everybody in the world likes to do is look at a user interface and be like, why is that box over there? How come that button is that color? Or, you know that kind of thing. And, and thinking about that on the person who spent all this time creating this giant you know uh, design and you're like nitpicking the uh, the, the little the little things. Um, can be incredibly demoralizing. And I think that, yeah, again, following the, the positive feedback model, I, I, I think is useful. Cool, okay. Oh, sure. I was gonna say, um, to kind of flip things a little bit, uh, kind of building upon what he said, which is that everyone doesn't think the same way. Uh, I think for the actual, the committer, the person submitting the pull request, to know that not everyone uh, you got to think about not only just the two people involved, which is the, the reviewer and the submitter, but any, anyone down the road who might be looking at your code in the future yep. and has to dig through your commits and see where you did something or you know, mm -hmm. and, and understand 
so uh, understand your design decisions and, and mm -hmm. so and and, and uh, writing your messages, your your comments in a way that like actually says what you did instead of saying, oh, this is a bug fix, or you know just made some changes or something like that. So um, think about all the parties involved, mm -hmm. um, not only just the two people. Yeah, absolutely. And then all the stuff that we're talking about has been you know on the pull request that doesn't live with the code, right? And so these comments and stuff are in the code. I think you know how to comment correctly. Um, you know, it's probably maybe we'll have to do the next talk. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. Yeah. Um, the uh, the um, what they say the um, uh, yeah the, the pull request itself is essentially mm -hmm. ephemeral. It lives on forever in your uh, Jira or whatever you use. But people rarely go back and look at it to see an explanation of why something. Okay, so, all right, you're gonna hate me, but everybody stand up. This is the uh, seventh inning stretch here. Um, so uh, what I would like to do um, is, I never know what to say to people in these kinds of meetings. I'm actually kind of an introvert in a weird way, um, even though I'm standing in front of talk to. So what I want you to do is uh, uh, turn to somebody that you don't know, introduce yourself, and, and you may not know what to say to them. What I want you to say to them is where you were born. Everybody's born. Oh. So meet somebody. Hello. Hey, it's nice to meet you. Where were you born? Me too. LA. Oh, I've been torn. Oh, where? Torn. It's like, that's like southwest part of the um, I'm not too familiar because I, I was born in, I guess, uh, I know the hospital Cedar Sinai. Cedar Sinai, but then I moved when I was two years old, so I never, and I didn't go back to like last year for the first time ever. So it's a completely foreign area to me, but yeah. I moved when I was like five, so. Oh, you moved pretty young as well. Yeah, when people ask where I'm from, I say I'm from Florida. Yeah, I say the next place, like, which is London for me. I moved to London after. But then I left there when I was nine, so I moved to. DC. It's actually say DC. Oh yeah, that was tough. Yeah, okay. I was nine, so I, yeah. maybe when I was like in middle school or high school, I would know, I'd be like, yeah, London. But now it's been so long, I just feel like it's DC, basically. Yeah, yeah. I'm in mean, here ten years now, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I work uh, for Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Our offices are like right around the corner there. So, so uh, yeah, I've been there for about four years. So, yeah. <laughs> what about you? You, you work here? Yeah. Amex. Amex. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just said that right. Sorry. Yep. So, so thank you guys. Thank you everybody for uh, indulging me in that. Uh, I did not say sit down yet. So, I, 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 I see people back there sitting. Yeah, come on, let's, let's do this. Um, okay, so uh, before we sit back down. Hey! Sorry, sorry. You told me to go pick you. I just had to say one thing. So, good. Hopefully, you made new friends for life. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, you know, before we sit down, has anybody ever heard of the birthday paradox? Yes. Okay. Great. One person? All right. Cool. So the birthday paradox is uh, <laughs> the, uh, talks about the probability that two people have the same birthday. Um, and oh yeah, there's an the introduction for the paradox to talk about. So what's interesting to me about the birthday paradox is that with 70 people, there's a 99.9% .9 probability. This is nothing to do with coding. Probability that two people have the same birthday. I think that's crazy. That's really cool to me. Um, and one of the things I've I found is that for some reason a lot of people have the same birthday as me. Um, I haven't really figured out how or why, um, but it's really strange when somebody has the same birthday as you. You kind of remember that, right? I can name like five people that I grew up with that had the same birthday, uh, cousins and uh, classmates and stuff like that. So all right. So if you were born between January first and June thirtieth, first half of the year. You mix it. Yeah. Everybody else was born after July, correct? Okay, good. So if you're born between uh, July 1st and October 31st, you can sit. That should leave you with my November and December babies. Yeah? Okay, so we got a couple? All right.
Keep standing if your birthday is between November 8th and November 20th. Keep what? Stay? Stand. Stand. Keep standing if you're November 8th to November 20th. All right. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> 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 Congratulations. Uh, you know, That's weird. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know if you're uh, familiar, but uh, what was going on nine months before you were born? But it was Valentine's Day, yeah. and <laughs> your dad is probably kind of like, hey, on, it's Valentine's yeah. Day. And, and your mom was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. Um, so what day, was, what day is your birthday? November 11th. November 11th. Uh, better to say? Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. So I'm, I'm November 20th. Oh, that's my ex. See? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Can I see that? Yes, you are. Unless you need to get another brief, then that's totally allowed. Uh, okay, well, so thank you guys for indulging me in that. Uh, that's always been something that I wanted to do. Um, maybe if I can get 70 people, I'll find somebody that has the same birthday as me. Um, but we'll worry about that for next time. I can introduce you to my ex girlfriend. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> there we go. I'll come together perfectly. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. Okay. My wife. Um, great. So, so where do we go from here? Uh, circling back to, you know, um, how do we sort of solve these problems? So we're engineers, right? We like to fix problems. I know how to do this. We can fix this with technology, right? So how else would you fix a people problem? Fix it with technology. Somebody say, uh. So I know what you're thinking. Mm, this feels weird, right? Um, and it does, but bear with me as we go through this. So. Um, what I did was uh, I created a couple of browser extensions to sort of help people, um, and help myself actually, uh, be more compassionate and be more thoughtful with the uh, pull request uh, area. So the first one I want to talk about is called Blind Review. So uh, some of you should recognize your picture over there. Uh, but so the Blind Review extension um, is really the the first idea that I had, which was recognizing that when I would go in to look at a pull request, the first thing that I would see is the person's picture. And even if it was a Gravatar image, I would know who that was, and I would know what kind of crap they were about to send me. And I was like, oh. And it would just, it would make me angry. Like, I'd, I'd literally feel like, oh, I gotta review this person's thing again. Every time you screw something up, and you know, that, that's not a great way to go. Uh, so um, even if you see someone's name too, obviously in you know maybe in a more corporate environment you don't have fun fun pictures like this, uh, but you know having that preconceived bias coming into the pull request, you know uh, the last time the last time she did this she made a mess of the, the constructors and, and really had a lot of work to do. So I'm going in thinking I'm going to have a lot of work to do. Um, so on, on, with that same notion. Uh, there's certain people, and again, these are all like my friends on GitHub, so I can use them. Uh, but with that same thought, is that there's maybe a, a person or two people that always cranks out great stuff, and like, oh, I'm going to go review this because it's all going to be awesome, and I'll just kind of like gloss over it, and it's fine. So you're automatically treating people two different ways, uh, at least two different ways, and you're giving a pass to the person that you sort of trust, and maybe you don't dig in as deep, and you don't question something you don't understand because ah, she knows what she's doing. Right? We're just, I'm just gonna let this go. I don't really understand it, but she knows what she's doing. Versus going at somebody that, you know, usually it's a two-line PR that you, everybody jumps on and loves to attack a two-line PR. Uh, but the, uh, you know, somebody that doesn't have, uh, somebody that gives you that anxiety and like, oh, I gotta go do this, this, this is the worst. So um, let me uh, show you a quick demo of how this works. So all of, let's hope this works. I'm gonna have to turn it back to you. So all of uh, these extensions are up on uh, GitHub. Oh wait, hang on. We have technology to solve this problem. I can just share my screen. I knew there was a solution for this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so I made a Chrome extension called Blind Review, and what I want to do uh, is well, we'll just go to GitHub. And we'll go to, uh, everybody's familiar with React? Sure. 
So this is what the pull request pages look like. With blind review, um, and again, my creativity lacks, so I just found a little tiny little icon here. Um, when you enable it, sorry, this text is really small, it hides from you the people's names. Right, so you can come through here like, oh, I'm gonna go on this disabled browser event, let me go click on that and see what's going on. Uh, so that one only has two comments, let's go to one that has 21 comments. So add with suspense config API. All right, cool, let's go look at that. So when uh, the actual pull request comes up, uh, what I've done is I've blocked out any, uh, even the reviewers over here, but I've blocked out the people's names and the people's uh, picture. Again, the things that cause me stress when I see it, or the things that like, ah, you know, I, I trust, uh, uh, I trust Katie, I'm just gonna let this go through. So, you can see it just, you know, it's fairly simple, right? The, the Chrome extension has a bunch of selectors that it looks for and it, it blots them out. So, uh, the, um, the good and bad thing is that you can hover over a name and find out who it was. Uh, well, of course, that's just a bot, but um, if you want to go and leave a comment, you can say, oh, this is this is Sebastian. I don't need to teach him how, to, how React works, like he knows. Um, so you can kind of like be a little bit more thoughtful with uh, crafting your message. But the the point being that, um, sorry, let me pull back. You, you eliminate that bias So the, uh, the blind review plugin uh, for Chrome has some uh, good aspects of it, right? It, it eliminates that initial, oh God, I gotta go look at this person's code. Uh, but it has its limitations. So 
Uh, Microsoft Azure has a, a sentiment analysis uh, API. And so you can see here, said, the text says, I had a wonderful trip to Seattle and enjoyed seeing the Space Needle. The sentiment analysis said, hey, 98%. So that's cool. Um, I attended this talk and it was great. So analyze that. And eh, not, so, not so great, but 89%, right? So it, it picks up on the words uh, talk and, and great and realizes that's positive. Um, and some of you may go home and say, hey, we attended this talk and it was awful. And analyze that and it comes back as at the speed of the internet, it's kind of negative, right? So 13% positivity score. So what uh, what I did with that was <coughs> create a, oh, sorry, there's a, um, so Azure provides the uh, API, it's free for a year if you sign up for the Azure thing, but then after that you gotta pay per thing, and that's not cool. So uh, I, I reached out to some people from Rhythm, and they said, oh, have you ever heard of Retext? And I said, nope. So Retext is an open source, um, text analysis tool, it can do all sorts of cool things. Um, and so uh, that's something else to, to look at. Yeah. So what I did was with the pull request sentiment analyzer uh, browser extension was go through all of the uh, comments on a pull request, um, I'm sorry, push a button, go through all the comments, send them off to the analysis, and then display a, uh, an image um, with a thumbs up or a thumbs cap sideways based on you know, whether or not it was positive. Um, and so that was kind of neat. So you could uh, take a look at all the comments that people have made on your PR and see if it was positive or negative and realize, well, those, those comments were already made. That, you know, how, how helpful is that? Um, and uh, one of the things that, yeah, we're not gonna do a demo because that wasn't working uh, last time I tried it. So uh, we'll, we'll just skip right to the recap. So it was a cool little project for me to like play with the Azure APIs and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't like the fact that it was after after the fact. Like these comments were already made, they're out there, the world can see them. Um, but I thought, hmm, I wonder if it would be uh, something we could do where you know we went through a, uh, a repository and, and all the pull requests and said, hey, you know these are the people that made comments and then we ship them all off to get analyzed and comes back and uh, you know Flipper is kind of a jerk and you know really needs to up his game in terms of how uh, compassionate he's being. Um, and of course the OA is 99%. She's always giving us good feedback um, in, in a positive manner. Um, and Mookie is for Mookie Betts because I'm a Red Sox fan. Yeah, he's number 50, that's why he's 50%. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, sorry, I need to. You guys can see my notes, but you're nice to deal with it. Uh, so yeah, so someone should talk to a Lori Flipper. Um, and, and maybe, oh, so maybe the, you know, these kind of stats can be used to uh, determine the, the health of a, uh, of a community around open source. Um, I think that would be kind of a neat thing for Google, Google, the Microsoft now that owns uh, both Azure and um, uh, GitHub to, to add in, right? Are the people in the community helpful? Are they, uh, are, are they compassionate? Um, so, so uh, you know, one of the things is this is after the fact, right? So maybe we could do better than that. Um, and we can tell them that their PR, their PR comment that they're about to send is mm, kind of crap, right? Um, and they want to, you know, double check before they actually submit it. Uh, so what I did here was I surrounded the Octocat with the compassionate coding. Um, April's website logo, so we're going to surround the uh, GitHub with some with some compassion. Uh, so I uh, so I built a, uh, a another browser extension. Right, this is just sort of an evolution of, of my thought process of how, how we get here. So um, so this will analyze the uh, the text before you submit it, and I call I called it perform CPR. You know, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So it fits with compassionate pull requests. So uh, let's take a look at what that would do. Uh, sort of another Facebook uh, request. I'm uh, sorry, a React request, and I'm going to turn off. Uh, uh, the blind review. We don't, we don't need that at the moment. Um, let's just open up this guy. Um, and. Let's pretend that I looked at the code. 
road, because obviously I would before I, I would make a comment. Um, I can say, you know, this this is terrible. Please um, don't ever come back. You know, <laughs> the typical PR message that you would leave on somebody you don't know. Um, and you can perform a sentiment analysis. So, yeah, I'm only 20% positive. So, sure. Um, by the way, the first time I did this, I made 50 comments on uh, some pull requests that I, didn't, I had no idea who they were, all saying shit like this. And I was like, oh my god, luckily you can go back and delete. Right, so my, uh, yeah, all because I forgot to, um, uh, what's it called when you tell it not to continue when you click a button? Oh, propagate, stop propagation. Stop propagation, all because I forgot that. Mm -hmm. Yep, that happens. Uh, so, <laughs> luckily I didn't get any email. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good point. I should let the positive ones go through. Um, so uh, this is this Question, is the best. Did you make this an Outlook extension whenever I write? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I agree. You're 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 and doing my next talk right now. <laughs> yeah, and have it convert to like corporate speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What are you doing with this? So I really disagree with this. <laughs> Dear friend. Uh, yeah, so what's what's funny is that I, sh I was showing, I was reviewing this this morning, um, and my son came over, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm preparing for my talk, and he's like, oh, show me, show me what you have. And the first thing he's like, can you do that with every text box? And I was like, we should. You know, if you're typing something in, it's going to be public, and da, da, da. like, yeah, it, it should be. So right now, this one is obviously limited to here. Um, I have no graphic ability, um, which uh, we can talk about uh, in a sec here. Okay, so, yeah, so anyway, I've got big plans for this, and I would hope that maybe I can even get some people to help me with this kind of thing, but, so what I'd really like to do with this is um, collaborate, and I use the, the compassion, um, the compassionate uh, colors, I have the perform CPR, I got a little blue heart trying to make it match with uh, uh, with April's motif, I mean, still need to reach out to her and uh, talk with her about maybe collaborating on something. Uh, the UX on it's kind of horrible, where you have to click a different button, uh, you have to, you know, it says percent positive, even if it's negative. Like, um, uh, I'd, I'd like to make that a little bit more like a, you know, a spinner and a, you know, status bar and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but other interesting parts of it are, you know, when you're analyzing pull request comments, in particular, uh, you're going to have code in there. You're going to have uh, <laughs> probably some uh, memes, right? But to be able to analyze all that stuff to give a, a different kind of score or a more elaborate score. Uh, I think it'd be really interesting. Uh, and then the part about, you know, hey, maybe we can actually make this happen with, with Azure and GitHub, you know, being owned by Microsoft. Have it part of the product uh, would be kind of neat. So why do I care, right? So why, why am I doing all this? Why am I putting effort in here? So uh, those are my two little kids. Um, I started thinking about, well, this industry uh, that we're in, how, how welcoming is it? And I was like, eh, it, you know, people kind of get by, right? But, Thinking about sending um, my kids through some of the uh, the things that, that people see, right? I, I want to be a community, a industry where everybody's welcome. We're able to, to bring in uh, talent from all over the place, from you know all kinds of different backgrounds, uh, and that's really my main my main motivation. Also, you know, based uh, uh, the places I've worked have been generally positive, but I, there, there's always uh, certain cases of um, people not being uh, thoughtful, and people not being caring. So um, I had my kid doing some pairing the other day. Um, my daughter's a little bit rough on my younger son uh, in terms of uh, him completing his code on time, but um, <laughs> so far so good. Um, and I had to include those pictures because <coughs> my monsters are now this big, um, and my daughter is now in high school and thinking about career path and all that kind of stuff, and uh, that makes me want to fix this problem of uh, compassion in the industry even even sooner. <laughs> I'm just showing my age. Um, so uh, just recap, you know, be thoughtful, be specific, you know, take your time, be encouraged, right? Consider the human on the other end. Uh, it, that all uh, part of, you know, making the, the world a better place. Um, so as I was reviewing my slides, of course, I follow April on Twitter. She actually spoke yesterday uh, at Impact Summit, and 
she gave, I wouldn't have uh, yelled at her like I yelled at you about this definition of compassion, even though it doesn't fit the uh, Google definition. But I really like it, the feeling that arises when you're confronted with another's suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. And suffering is a strong word. Um, but you kind of get that point, you get the point, you get that feeling, that, that sensation. So, um, you know, compassion being a combination of uh, empathy and action, uh, I think speaks volumes. Um, that's the end of my talk. Um, thank you for joining. I, I would love if uh, you guys reach out to me on Twitter, uh, you know, find me on LinkedIn, whatever. Uh, you know, let's talk, let's continue the conversation. Um, I do want, I have links, uh, I'll share this with, uh, uh, with you all to the different plugins that I've created, uh, but more importantly, some of the blog uh, entries that I've, that I've written. Um, give you a sneak peek of the toxic pull requests. Um, look at those, if you don't, um, you might see yourself in some of those. Um, hopefully not too many teammates uh, in there, but uh, uh, I, it was a, a fun, um, uh, blog post to write, and it's from real life experience and real life uh, <coughs> scenarios that I've witnessed um, over the years. So that's it. Thank you. Someone, someone might give like a really good, thoughtful, like critical, but like trying to do like <coughs> good, good intention um, comment or, mm -hmm. or review, right? But you know, it might only get a fifty percent um, mm -hmm. analysis because of word choice or something like that. And then you could write some fluffy comment that really has no content or anything that has like <laughs> rainbows and but beautiful or whatever, and might yeah. get a hundred percent. So that's that's one like. In mm -hmm. that approach that I see, um, and then um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And what what I'm hoping to do eventually, right? So we're just using the vanilla <coughs> sensitive analysis tool that uh, everybody has access to. Right. But imagine a, a, a you know, uh, I'll say machine learning, but that took all of the comments in GitHub and sort of like worked through and figured out like what was useful as well as yeah. you know, they, all the stuff's public data, so there's a lot of turn on and right. maybe point in the right direction beyond the scope of you know my little Chrome extension, right? you yeah. know, kind of like in the realm of ML and uh, you know combining all that. Right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Uh, before before I let you go, um, I want to um, tell you all that that we're trying to do these uh, meetups more regularly. Oh Lord, I'm not lying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Upcoming events. So uh, I would be remiss if I did not uh, recommend the upcoming uh, speakers talking about different things like React and D3, uh, as well as GraphQL. Danny? Yep. Behind yeah. Danny's over there. And then uh, just got a notification about this one. Sam, where are you? Sam, we're going to be talking about typography and photography. I'm pretty sure that's not how you pronounce it, but I got it. <laughs> it sounded good together. So yeah, so come back and, and let's do this again, and I'll sit down, and you guys want to listen to me, it's much better when Sam or Denny talk, and I think, I think you'll enjoy it. Cool? Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah.